Introversion preferences is usually going to be okay with not having spoken for a while, but someone with extraversion preferences might try to fill the silence and then that sounds like verbal diarrhea or it might just be chatty and stuff, but it doesn't necessarily mean that is the actual opinion. Everybody communicates differently and personality type awareness can help us make visible the things that are usually hidden. For example, what kind of information we trust and how we like to have things communicated. This is an invitation to keep in mind that we expect others to communicate the way we communicate. As we're going through some of the differences, hopefully it becomes clear that just with the expectation that everybody communicates the way we would communicate, that is creating a lot of misunderstandings and a lot of potential potholes and conflict and friction. Hopefully keeping the following ideas and tips in mind will help you navigate those potholes going forward. In a short video that I published earlier, I was talking about the sensing and intuiting differences and how people with sensing preferences like the steps and the details of how you got to a decision, whereas people with intuiting preferences tend to speak more broadly and get bogged down with too much detail. Similarly, there's also a significant difference between people with extraversion and introversion preferences, namely that those with extraversion preferences like to think out loud and they process information out here. So people with extraversion preferences, a lot of the times we don't know what we think or how we feel about it or what we want to do about a certain issue until we have said it out loud, until it has literally rolled off our tongue and we can manipulate it outside of ourselves. The thoughts in our heads tend to be jumbled, but outside verbalizing it or even putting things on a bit of paper that helps us clarify our thoughts. Contrast that with people who have introversion preferences, they tend to think things through and then speak. So the product of the speech, the product of the thought process for somebody with introversion preferences is a lot more refined and is a lot more honed already. Doesn't necessarily have to be their last and final opinion, but it's already gone through a thought process. So if somebody with introversion preferences listens to somebody with extraversion preferences, assuming that they have already gone through a thought process as well, they might be surprised and they might be thinking, oh, okay, if this is your decision. Whereas the extroverted person may just have wanted to get a list out there and they haven't actually made a final decision yet. With introversion preferences, it's usually going to be okay with not having spoken for a while, but someone with extraversion preferences might try to fill the silence and then that sounds like verbal diarrhea or it might just be chatty and stuff, but it doesn't necessarily mean that is the actual opinion. So people with extraversion preferences like to think out loud. People with introversion preferences tend to think before they speak. And people with sensing preferences are comfortable with a good amount of detail comparing it to what has come before, what is happening in the here and now, what are the experiences, and tangible information. And people with intuiting preferences are happy with ideas and theories and thoughts, and it can be completely out there, and it can be three steps ahead, and it can come from the stroke of insight or an intuition. And then if we're looking at communication preferences and differences between the different temperaments or the different essential motivator styles. We have the catalysts. Those are the types with an NF in the middle of their type code. They tend to be comfortable talking about relationships and the future and possibilities. NF is also about possibilities for people. And so the talent that people with the catalyst temperament have is for diplomacy and building bridges and connecting with others. So they value the personal relationship and authenticity and personal growth. So you will often hear them praising others and supporting and encouraging and really being a cheerleader. The language is quite global, so they might like to use metaphors as well and then using broad and general terms to allow their partner or to allow the conversation partner to add their own interpretation. Theorist types or those with an NT in their type code, 
their talent is for strategizing and organizing and segmenting and analyzing. They value competence and autonomy. So their language is very much factual and um, evidence based and logical. And you will also find them critiquing a lot. And to somebody with an NF in their type code that can sound like criticism, because remember, NF is about possibilities for people and encouraging warmth loving, supporting, heartfelt language. And so a theorist critique is usually provided with the intention to make you better. It's provided with the intention to poke holes in your argument to make sure that you know what you're talking about because they would not want to be found out to have made an error. So they are trying to save you from making that same mistake. They're not actually criticizing you as a person. They may be critiquing your idea or they may be inviting you to think about it through different systems and applying different logic. And then uh, they're very precise about what it is that they mean. Their time orientation, infinite. So where the catalyst is a little more future focused about what the relationship can, where it can go about the possibility, the theorist language is more infinite and it's more about the possibilities maybe for systems and for timeless application and possibilities for systems. Stabilizer types are those who have an SJ in their type code. Their talent is for logistics and they tend to be more on the protective and preserving side. So these are people who love to be in community, who love to be of service, who are fond of structures and who like to have everybody knowing their place. So their language can be a little bit more instructive. Right? There is a little bit more of shooting happening perhaps and they can also easily point out when something is wrong or when how it used to be and why isn't it like that anymore. They use customary language and they enjoy having a bit of jargon as well. So like abbreviations or specific terms that denote their membership in a particular group or in a particular community. And then the referencing of the past is also very much done to providing stability for the future and basically the responsibility and service and duty and belonging is very important to them. Contrast that with the improviser types, those who have an SP in their type code. Their talent is very much tactical and they are the natural performers. So a lot of artists have SP preferences, singers, troubleshooters, firemen, very people who are very active, who are in the moment. Their neural brain pattern looks like a tennis hop because they're ready to go whatever direction at a moment's notice, whatever is needed. And so their language, they will be using kind of contextual anecdotes. They're going to have a lot of examples and basically maybe painting a picture of what they want to say. And then they're also born entertainers. They are less with the jargon, but more with the buzzwords maybe. They really enjoy talking about what's happening here and now and how they can have an impact. One of their core needs is to have the freedom and to make an impact so their language can be quite colorful as well. So to recap, when you're communicating with a catalyst or somebody with NF preferences in their type code, use metaphors, highlight the relationship and appreciate them and praise them and encourage them and show that you're emotionally engaged. When you're talking with a theorist or someone with an NT in their type code, feel free to use broad concepts and ideas, but be precise about describing them analyzing and critiquing and poking holes into their theories and their stories or critiquing yourself to show that you've thought it through and that you're following a sort of logic as well as going to help convince them of whatever decision you might want to make with them. And then someone with a stabilizer temperament or the SJ, you want to use specific terms that are particular to the group that you're referring to or particular to the company or the, the community. You might also want to provide metrics to know where everybody stands and compare the past to the present and you know what can be done for the future. And then the improviser temperament or people with SP in their type code, you want to use anecdotes and colorful language and stories and make it exciting and feel free to improvise 
to make sure you keep their attention and you capture their attention and get them on board that way. These are just some examples for how people with different personality type preferences communicate. I hope you find them helpful and I'll see you next time.